this is this is your gun to Weatherby. It's the same one that you were looking at the other day. Right, right. Those are your chokes. We'll talk about those tomorrow. Okay. That's your custom gun lock. That's your orange manual. Okay. That is your barrel. Okay. And your forearm. Buttstock, receiver, barrels, receiver, forearm. Barrels. Forearm? Button. What's the forearm? What do you mean forearm? This is the forearm. The wood is called the forearm. Okay. 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 So to release it, you push the button down. Okay. The forearm comes off. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So this can just sit here for now. Okay. Because you want to be careful. You don't want to ding that all up. Okay. So we're going to push that lever to the right. Okay. You see this recess here? Right here. Yeah. yeah. That recess is going to go around those rings. Okay. See so you. Yeah. 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 But it's going to go in on a slight angle. Okay. All right. Okay. And you're going to notice also that these buttons. Mm -hmm. These eject extractors, okay. they're going to fit down inside of here. Oh, right in there, okay. Right. There's one on the other side, too. Okay. Yes. Yep. So you're going to come in here very gently. Mm -hmm. So this has to be behind those buttons. Okay. And you're going to roll it back, and it's going to click shut. Okay. Are you here? Yeah, you're doing good. Yeah, Perfect. Good. See how easy it is? A little forward. Remember that button has got to be in front of that. Go oh, this way. There you go. There you go. Okay. All right. So once you've got that together, mm -hmm. okay, then this radius fits inside of this radius. Okay. All right. So you're just going to literally bring it in gently, push it in, okay. and we're going to close it up. Okay. It's not gonna come apart now. Okay. It's just stiff, you gotta, it's gotta get okay, warm. Okay, okay, okay. That works just like the one you've been using up on the range. Okay. Okay, so, so that's the safety, it's off safe. Pull it back, it's on safe. Okay. Also, you select your barrel. Oh, okay. So which barrel goes off first? We'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay. So then tomorrow, we'll talk about your chokes. Okay. The chokes are these inserts right here. Okay. So we can change those out, mm -hmm. but we'll talk about that tomorrow. Cylinder bore. The bore of the, of the barrel is the same inside diameter, or ID, all the way from front to the end of the muzzle. Okay. Same uh, dimension. Right. Now, some, some guns before insertable chokes, they would constrict the... the the end of the muzzle mechanically to get a choke that that would constrict the the shot as they came out of the barrel. What's the intent of the choke to uh, so condense what, the shot? Correct. So, rather than spread it out. Yeah. So the pattern of a of a of a shot as it comes out of the barrel get to. 30, 30 feet or 30 yards, I can't remember anyway, and it has the density within that distance should fill up a 30 inch circle. Okay. But the idea is that if you want to fill up that same 30 inch circle further back, so you're going to reach further out oh, okay. along the range, right. then you need to constrict the choke okay. so that that shot stays together longer so that it gets further out in the field before it fills up that 30 inch pattern. Okay, I understand. Okay. Now, if you wanna have uh, that 30 inch pattern closer in, then you'd wanna open up the size of the choke so that it spreads quicker. Okay. okay. With skeet, you want to maintain that, that, that 30 inch circle at a range that is conducive or proper for the skeet ranges. 
right. the, the distances that you're going to shoot. So modern shotguns, most modern shotguns have the ability to change the chokes. And that's what an insertable choke looks ah, like. Ah, okay. So, okay. Again, yeah. so that is a full full choke. Okay. So that fully constricts. And, uh, and it's threaded. It's to go in and out of and the barrel. And so is it made specifically for, for the Weatherby, gun. for this, this yes. gun? Yeah. Okay. So... Let's, I don't know what the chokes are in this gun. Okay. Oh, there's some there already. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to find out what they gave you. And obviously the choke can only go one way because this thing's got to take it out. Yep. Okay. Very fine thread so that it stays intact. This is an improved cylinder. I see is an improved cylinder. So in the range from the most const the, the, the least constricted to the most constricted, improved cylinder is slightly more constricted by five thousandths than a skeet choke. So okay. it's a little tighter. Right, right. Okay. So we want a skeet show, which gives it, a, we'll spread it out a little bit more. Right. So, so for the distance that we're shooting. So let's take a look at this and see what the bottom one is. So the skeet. The, so the choke uh, doesn't really have to be in there, but if you want to be conscious of the. Oh, you have thread. to have a choke in, in, in these guns. Yeah. A choke has to be in there, otherwise you destroy the threads. You oh, I see what you're saying. You okay. can't shoot it without a choke. Ah, good. Okay, okay. And this is a modified. Okay, which is which is even um, more constricted than a um, improved cylinder. Okay. okay. So this gun is not set up for skeet, but the difference between. Um, Improved cylinder and skeet is only five thousandths. Mm -hmm. um, modified goes up to a twenty thousandths constriction. So we're going to put that in the bottom. Okay. Then we're going to put the improved cylinder in the top, which is right where they were. All right. And there's nothing else. Oh, there is another one in here then. Right, okay. but that's that's the that's the full choke, which is really constricted. Okay. So that's interesting because for, yeah, I can see what you're saying. So for skeet, you're really shooting two different types of uh, spread as it. So so to shoot the bottom barrel first, because when we shoot doubles, which you're not going to do yet, but when we shoot doubles you're going to be shooting much closer. So you want a much bigger spread. Okay. So we're going to shoot the, the bottom barrel first. So we want, we want the, the most restricted to be fired first because we're going to be shooting longer distances. Okay. And under doubles, you're always shooting closer. So we want a broader choke. So we're going to shoot the bottom barrel first. Okay, so what are these for right here? So we're going to select the barrel that fires first. And according to the manual, the single dot means uh -huh. you're firing the lower barrel first. Okay. All right. And then this double dot means you're going to shoot the top barrel first. Okay, so this is just pushed back and forth. Depending. Correct. Okay. Yep. So we're going to do it, leave it on the single dot because we want okay. to always fire the the bottom barrel first because it is the most constricted in the choke. The S stands for safety. So That's when this safety. is pulled back, it's it's unsafe. It's back, you see the S, it's unsafe. So it's cannot pull the trigger. Uh, good, okay. And when it's up? You see the red dot. Which uh Danger, okay, which means which, which you is live. Which is live. You okay. can now fire the gun. Can you uh, try shoot this a shotgun? You you can, but I wouldn't recommend that you do it over and over and over again. Okay. You can buy something called snap caps. Right. A snap cap is a fake shotgun shell, usually made out of plastic. Right. It goes in there. 
the barrel. Oh, so that's a snap cap to uh, dry so, shoot it. So that it absorbs the impact of the primer, okay. which helps to um, preserve the spring and mechanism so that you're not likely to break apart. So sometimes when you snap them or just shoot them, there's, the primer's not hitting anything. Right. So it comes to the end of its stroke and it slaps. That's that click that you hear. Right. Okay, by using the snap cap, it's now hitting that snap cap, absorbing the impact of the primer. Okay. All right. Basics, and we're going to set up a clay on the ground. I'm going to let you aim at it. Okay. Shoot at it so that we can see where your point of impact is based on your point of aim. Right. That'll help me to understand how this gun fits you and how you're mounting the gun specifically to shoot the clays. Okay. Once we've got that done and once we understand that you are literally, the gun is fitting you and it's aiming or it's hitting where you're pointing it, then we'll go back and start shooting the clays. But we're going to go back to that first target that we shot three weeks ago, that going away target, just to make sure that the gun is fitting you properly and that you are you're able to to use the gun in the same way that you were using the one that we were training with. I'm a rookie here with a Skeet. I've shot standing before, but never with a moving target. So yep. this is a, this is all brand new to me. Yep. Well, you've been doing good, Steve. I mean, okay. you're, you're, you're Abilities from day one have expanded hugely. So we're going to we're going to hope that this gun um, works for you. Okay. Right. So Thank what's you. the wad? You keep talking about. So the, the wad. shot lives inside the wad. Oh. Okay. The powder lives below the wad. Mm -hmm. When the gun goes off, this compresses, taking the shock away. As the powder as the powder explodes or, or expands, the gases expand. This compresses, takes that initial shock away, right. and then pushes the, um, the BBs out of the barrel. Right. So the shot stays confined inside the wad until it gets to the end of the barrel. Oh, okay. Then, like a shuttlecock or um, like in badminton, yeah. that'll open up. That'll that'll catch the wind, fall back. Okay. And then the shot will keep going. Interesting. Now, sometimes you can see the shot further out, can't you? I can see, I, on the certain light conditions, yeah. I can actually see the shot. Yeah, it's fascinating. Okay. But only because I've been doing it for so long. Oh, okay. Sometimes I have no idea where it is. So what are we going to do, Chris, Bill? We're going to shoot out those clay pigeons. Okay. On the so and then so to sight the gun in and see how I'm doing. You're going to stand here. Okay. Okay. You're going to open the gun and you're going to load the top and barrel, top and bottom. We know the bottom barrel is going to go off first. Okay. Right, go ahead, open it up. You want to bring that foot forward. You want to face face the clay. No, mm -hmm. face the clay. Bring that forward. This one forward. There you go. Just like that. Okay. okay. So it's on safe right now. Okay. But you're going to push that forward when you're ready. Okay. You're going to shoot at the left side bird first. Okay. That way I'm going to see how you're aiming with this gun. Okay. Take the safety off. Not that. Left hand burn. Perfect. Yep, perfect. I'll go ahead and shoot the right hand bird. Now you're using the top barrel. Close enough. You're a little bit high on it, but close enough. Okay. So you're sighting the gun the same way you were sighting the other one. Okay. Which is a good thing. Okay. okay. So you always leave it open while you're traveling with the gun okay. on the range. I want to go over to the low house okay. and shoot some going away birds. Okay. Just It's going to be the same thing as you shot here, right. but you're going to shoot at those going away birds. And that's, that's going to, again, help test the fact that you're now using a different gun. Okay. okay. All right, so this bird's going to come out of this house. you got to move that. So, <clears throat> it's going to come out of the house. It's going to go right over that stake. Okay. Okay. And it's going to be right at the top of the tree. Okay. So you're going to aim at that bird going away. Okay. And same thing, when you've got it sighted like you did the bird on the ground, you're going to pull the trigger. Great. Right, right off gonna... your right shoulder. Okay. Right. It's going to go right far. Okay. And you're going to aim right at it. Okay. Top of the tree. Okay. Yep. 
And then when it comes you're out, you're going to put that bead right on the bird and pull the trigger. Okay, right on the bird in this case because it's going straight out. Correct. Now, listen to me carefully. The bird is in motion. So it's not going to be stable like that bird. You're going to have to follow the bird. Okay. So the bird's going to rise and then it's going to fall. But I'm still aiming for it. I'm but not you got to correct. lead it. But you got to follow it. Okay. You can't you can't just pull the trigger and stop. You got to keep following the bird. Okay. Pull the trigger, keep following the bird. Okay. Pull. Keep us through it again. Okay. Pull. Okay, you broke two. It's 100% right now. Okay, let's do two more going away. Pull. You shoot that gun very well. You're shooting that gun better than the other one. This time we're going to shoot the high house, but it's going to be coming this way. Okay. You're going to follow it. Put the bird on. Put put the muzzle or the bead on it. Right. And pull the trigger, but you're still aiming right at it. Okay. But the difference is, is it's in motion. You cannot stop swinging. When you pull the trigger, you got to keep swinging. Okay. It's going to go. It's going to come from there. Put your ammo in or whatever until you stand it, stand it on the squares. That way the raindrops can control you. Okay. Right, just to the right of the house. Okay. You ready? Oh. Okay. Try it again. Follow, 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 follow. Okay. Start right over the stake. About six or eight feet up. Okay. Same thing, you're going to aim right at it, pull the trigger. Okay. But the bird's in motion, so you got to follow it. Okay, so pull. Okay, you missed it that time. Remember to follow it down because it's, on, it's falling as you go. Pull. Pull the trigger, you went like this with the gun. Did I? Yeah. Okay. Put your cheek right down on that cheek piece. Don't move the gun. Move your entire body. Pull. Do the same thing. You pull the trigger and you lift with the gun. Pull the trigger and I lift with the gun. Yeah. Now how do I correct it? <laughs> Practice. Huh? We'll Practice. Get it. We'll get it. Okay. All right, close up the gun and mount it for me, okay? So you're going to come back. See that tall tree right there? Yeah, you're going to start right about there, right in the middle of it, okay? okay. You're going to call it pull. The bird's going to go across. Right. You're going to do one-fifth lead, all right, and about two inches below the flight line. Okay, one-fifth lead, about two inches so below. So it's going to, the sight picture, pretend my hand is the bird, right? Okay, or the clay. It's going to look like that when you pull the trigger. Roll it in front. Just like that. Okay. okay. One fist. Right. Now, as I move my hand, I want you to maintain that lead. Okay, ready? Here we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, let's do it again. Okay. Okay. Ready? Here we go. Good. You got to do that all the way through. Okay. Okay, open right. the gun. We're going to do the low house this time. Okay. Low house is the same way, only this time it's going to be over here. We're going to lead it from right to left. Okay. It's going to come out of the house. We're going to get that same lead, one fist ahead of it, two inches below. Okay. Then we're going to pull the trigger. Let's see the follow. Just about 10 or 15 feet to the left of the window. Pull. Well, no 
normally we shoot. Was, normally was. we shoot with both eyes open. Right. That's what you told me. We we're gonna put a thing. Yeah, on we forgot to do that. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. So let's try the low house again. Okay. Come back. Do this again. Yeah. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. You're not getting it. Do it again. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. To the end, but yeah, but you hit it. Okay, okay. do the same thing. You do another low, and you can do a high. Yeah. You got call. You do a high. Okay. Aim right at it. So if it's if, if uh, if right. it, this thing's coming from left to right, you got aim right at it. Okay, you can do it. Come Where's it coming from? Okay, out. I'm going this way. You want to stay. Thank you very much, Bill. I appreciate it My very, pleasure. very much. This My has been pleasure, Steve. quite instructional, and uh, you're great to in instruct. It's easy to understand, Good. and you're very patient with me. Good. Yeah, very um, patient with so, me. So the key to this is not to quit. Yeah. So you get only get better by shooting more. Okay. So we focused on the stations that were generally the most intuitive, the easiest to learn. Right. So we're going to need to spend more time on these harder or more difficult stations. Okay. But we really, before we get there, we really need to get you comfortable on these four stations. Right. Okay. So that it becomes more, more intuitive, more, more muscle memory as you, as you begin to mount the gun and, and pull the trigger when you get the leads right. So, right. so we need to go back. So you need not to quit. Okay, okay. So, well, that's why I'm here. Yeah, so, I didn't pay all this money to quit. Yeah, so again, we do regular shoots on Saturday morning, uh, but you're going to shoot with some very good shooters on Saturday. But if you want to continue to do this, we can we can continue this. Again, develop this muscle memory, this this sort of intuitive sense of where the gun is mounted and where it's pointed every time you mount the gun. Okay. All right. Great. Thank right. you so much. I appreciate it. No, my pleasure. So this thing. Um, Screws together. This goes up here. You don't have to dismantle this to clean it every time. Okay. So obviously, you don't you don't want to squeeze it too tight because <laughs> right. it's a tube. Yeah. All right. So you want it just enough to keep it there. Okay. All right. And then we'll use the brush. 12 gauge brush. So I'm just getting a little cleaner on there. Okay. Okay. Don't clean it from the muzzle. Clean it from the back. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, because you don't want to you don't want to mess with the chokes. Okay. So you come from the back and you're gonna just run that brush up through there. All right. Okay. And you're gonna let that hoppies just sort of sit in there a little bit. Okay. Okay. The reason I'm doing this is I don't want to get all that hoppies down inside the action. No. Nope. Just let that sit in there for a half for a couple seconds. All right. All right. And then you can see the dirt's already coming out on it. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. And that's the powder residue, powder and lead. Yeah. And you're just gonna. And you want to try and keep control of that, so you're not bumping the side of the chamber. All right. And you're just gonna let it do what it does. You're just scrubbing it out. All right. So you just let it sit there for a couple minutes. And you've got the cloth. Okay. Hold it like a napkin. 
This is a straight edge going away from you. Mm -hmm. And we'll just get in there and kind of pull away all the muck. Oh, it is, yeah. Okay. And we'll do the same thing down here. And then the last thing we're going to do is take a look in there. And Oh, you look through. I see what you're saying. Okay, if you look down in there, Steve, you're going to see that that's nice and shiny. Yep. Yep. Because you've got Hoppy's oil, which is a lubricant. Okay. Okay. And you want to add a little bit of that lubricant in. Okay, I'm just going to use a single patch on this one. It's just an oil. It's a lubricant and it's actually also a protectant, so it'll help keep the chamber and the barrel from rusting. Oh, okay. Okay. Doesn't take a lot. Just a little bit, huh? Okay. You can also. See how it's still picking up more? Yeah. More of the residue. Last thing, okay, if you look down inside, you can see there's some residue down in there. Yeah, I do, I see it, yeah. Okay, so the only way you're going to fully clean that is to take the barrel off the gun, okay? okay. And I rarely, I don't really, I don't do that every time I shoot. Mm -hmm. But you do get in there with a, with a toothbrush, okay, and you're just sort of getting all of that residue out of there. Okay, right. I see. So with the, obviously with the barrel out, that just shows. It's, it's, yeah, it's easier yeah, right. to get, and you can get all right. this mechanism. Yep. So I'm just cleaning this up. Um, yeah. How often should you take the barrel apart? You know how easy it comes apart. Yeah. You figure it out. Yeah. You decide how often you wanna wanna go through all this. We shot 50 rounds, right. which is which is probably an average day for a shooter. Right. Okay. So I'm just taking a look at it, and making sure that. Are you doing anything for the trigger or the no. uh, pen no. or anything? No. 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 Um, taking the stock off is something. I don't. I don't know, buddy. You know, it's it's the the, the odds of stuff dirt getting in there are pretty small. Yeah. But once in a while, if you want to take the stock no, off, if this stuff moves, you you don't you don't do anything in here then. No. Okay. No. Because no. it's it's. It's pretty sealed. I'm not okay. saying it's perfect, but um, close it up. Okay. You need to have a, a rag. Now, what I do, this is this is impregnated. You can buy impregnated rags, okay? Um, that's all fine. Uh, at home, I have an old bed sheet right. that I cut into a one-foot square. Okay. And all I did was put a little WD-40 on it, right. okay? Oh, okay? Okay, so I can just wipe this thing down. Right. Because this will, if you get fingerprints on it, right. it'll, it'll, it'll rust. It'll yeah. rust, okay? okay? So we're just doing this. Okay. Um, do not put a lot of oil on a gun. Okay. Get out of that, that mentality that you have to over-oil a gun. Because what will happen over time is the oil will begin to seep into the end grain mm. of the stock. All right. It'll begin to stain it and it'll begin to weaken it. Okay. So this is just a lightly, you can feel it. Right. And I'm just making sure the fingerprints are gone. Yeah. All right. And then, then we're done. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much.